I can't tell you how excited I am today to get into this piece of the project. We're gonna laminate the sides together, and this is my first time using the vacuum bag and all of the equipment that goes with it. So we all know the components I'm working with. I've got a popsicle stick. I buy these in bags of like 100 to mix the epoxy together. I've got a little Dixie cup that I put some graduations on. This is a two to one mix. I've got a silicone spreader. You can use like a Bondo spreader or whatever. These, I understand, work a little bit better for this operation. I've got my side bending mold out here along with a piece of wax paper on it so that we don't get epoxy stuck to the mold and the sides <laughs> stuck to that. I've got my two sides over there that I'm gonna laminate together and then I've got a piece of expanded plastic on the far end. The first order of business is going to be to mix the epoxy. I think we've got about a four hour open time on this, so I'm not in a huge rush. This is the System 3 version of resin and nothing special about System 3. I think West Systems is fine and some of the others. This just happened to be the one that was available to me fairly easily. This is their silver tip epoxy and it's good for laminating and doing those sorts of things. So um, that's what I wanted to use for the guitar sides. I'm probably mixing up way too much, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. This is the outside board. So I'm just gonna let a little bit flow here and make sure we've got good coverage all the way down. We'll set this off to the side. Now we gotta do the top of this one. So we'll just pour a little generous bead out there. And that's probably too much, but we can deal with that. I just wanna make sure on my very first pour here that I don't starve, <laughs> starve this thing for adhesive and uh, wind up with a spot that comes delaminated later in time. I think that would be a terrible outcome. I'd rather have a little extra squeeze out that I have to clean up somewhere along the way. We should have about a four hour open time on this. So I'm not overly concerned about speed here. We just wanna take our time and get it right. And I know this inside was the one that I bent first and I bent it a couple weeks ago actually as a practice. And so I really wanna get the outside one lined up and then hopefully it'll all suck down and be awesome. So that's essentially how they're gonna sit. I need to make sure my wax paper is covering the mold here. We'll put our plastic on top of this. And again, this is so that air can get all the way around the sides. I feel like we're in pretty good shape right there to go into the bag. Put our plastic over the top here. Just lining the sides up here with one another. And I feel like feel like that's something I can wrestle into place as I start, as we start sucking the air out of this guy. I've got this little piece of PVC and then a little cover for it to seal up the bag. So I think the idea is you get a nice straight section like this and just fold it over like that. Just a little bit of coordination. Yep, perfect. Now I feel like the boy in the bubble, but from the other side, <laughs> just trying to make sure we've got everything lined up here. 
as best we can. Now, turning on the vacuum. One more check to make sure it's all lined up. I'm up at 6,500 feet above sea level, so we can't get down in the 25 to 27 range for inches of mercury, but we can get to about 22, which is, you can see the little mark on the gauge there. It's right where it has to be. So we're drawing a good vacuum. There's plenty of pressure back there. Feeling good. I did have to add a couple clamps because the area where the neck block attaches wasn't sucked in to the form. So I might need to just extend that form a little bit to make this better in the future. Well, this lamination wasn't without incident. Um, this setup probably looks slightly different than when I turned the camera off last, but I thought I saw a little imperfection here in the upper bout. And so I took the vacuum off the bag and reset some things and it all seemed to go well and that was fine and when I started the vacuum back up I actually had a gap between the little baseboard I have down here and my mold and it sucked the bag into the gap and it actually popped the bag so I've got a hole in the bag down here thankfully I had another clamp for the bag <laughs> so I was able to sort of roll everything up and make it work but it was harrowing um, because it was, as the epoxy was starting to get hard, and it, you know, it's a timed event once it starts to kick off. So I don't know what we're gonna get out of this bag. It may be a total disaster. I may need to strip it and start again. Uh, if so, not a big deal, we'll, we'll do that. I've had worse happen in my life. So yeah, let's, let's release the vacuum here. And take off this clamp doesn't look too bad so far. I'll take this clamp off. Gosh, good thing I had an extra clamp. <laughs> that was just sort of a mistake when I ordered everything. I just ordered a big long one and didn't really need it. But no, it looks much better than it did a few hours ago. So See if the wax paper will release. Yeah, not a problem at all. That looks actually super good. And the one thing I was really hoping for is the sides were pretty floppy, which you would expect from, you know, a thin side like that. But this is pretty stiff now. And I don't think, I was gonna say, I don't think the laminations could have been any better maybe a touch better, but there's zero gap here between the laminations. It, it came out just stunningly good. Yeah, I'll turn that one in for grade for sure. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I'm stoked with that. I don't think I could have asked for a better result on my first ever. Like I said, little misalignment down here, but I think as we start to radius everything, it'll just take care of itself. I don't, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. So let's do the cutaway sides. I think this is gonna be much more involved. <sighs> yeah, I really need to think about this before I stick it in the bag. It, it may be tomorrow before I get that going. I'll just cut you guys on here and we can fast forward through this but I really need my concentration for this round. This is the cutaway, so it's a little bit more, I think, a little bit more challenging.
You can see there's a little bit of gymnastics. I hope I wasn't too much in front of the camera. I had a couple little holes in my mold that I had to plug so that the plastic bag wouldn't suck in there and pop again. But this little plug that I used when I bent the sides, I just kind of set that in the bag and then put it into place. It is, uh, you know, you're working against the clock when you're doing the vacuum there, but you're able to plug and unplug this as many times as you need to. I think there's a 25 minute gel time on this and then uh, somewhere around four hours to cure. So you got a little time to mess around. Plus the fact that it's in a vacuum, I think you actually get to extend your time a little bit on the resin. I can't find anything specific about that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. My little leftover Dixie cup here is hard as a rock. So I'm hoping that we're cured up here. I've been monitoring the vacuum system. It kicks on about once an hour is about the average here, which I think is you know, pretty good. Just very, very slight leak through some of these surfaces couldn't be happier. So let's turn that off and then unhook this. If it wasn't cured, I think it would be kind of springing all back out. I just want to make sure that's not the case. There's our little plug. I covered it in wax paper that worked out. And did our plastic get sucked in? Maybe. Uh-oh, did we learn another lesson here? Looks like we must have had a spot just at the back here that got a little friendly with our form. I think we're through it now. This looks super good. Probably learning a few things. I need to take wax paper maybe all the way over, just a full sheet. I cut a sheet in half. Maybe a full sheet would do better. I did use some blue tape to stick it in place and it looks like that blue tape definitely stuck to the epoxy. Not a huge issue there, but just kind of keep that in mind next time I'm doing this. Avoid some of those little pitfalls, just have a cleaner process altogether. We'll get a little closer look here and you can see the seam is super tight and as it was curing, I was nervous about this. You'd call it the horn if you wanted to, but it's the upper bout. I saw this offset through the bag and I thought it was a gap. It's really hard to tell the difference, but it looks like it's really pulled together well. I was nervous that there was a little gap in there and there absolutely isn't. Then on the back side of this, you can see a little bit of misalignment there and uh, not a big deal. I cut both of these pieces over size, so we should be able to take care of that when we're doing the radiusing in the dish. So there we go. I don't think I could be happier with the results from my first side lamination gig here. I've got two halves to a cutaway guitar. I've got to do two more halves for the other guitar and then we'll be putting these in the mold and starting to make it look like an actual guitar body next time we get together. Thanks everybody who's following along and commenting on the videos. I really get a kick out of seeing other people's thoughts on my build process and the thoughts on the way they build their guitars. So until next time, everybody take care. If you would like more guitar related content, click that subscribe button. If you want to follow the rest of this build, click the playlist to the right. And as always, visit skyscraperguitars.com for guitar tools and accessories.